I am representative and ambassador for the New Orleans Vampire Community. I am founder and elder of House Solaris. Okay, so I'm going to ask some questions that may seem uh, silly or, or whatever, but um, is, that, is that like an elected position, becoming an elder? Elder is actually earned, it's not gained. Earned, okay, okay. And uh, what kind of responsibilities do you have as an elder? This basic uh, respect from uh, from people, but it again, it's not, you know, gained. It's earned. Well, if anybody actually has any problems within the vampire community or any of the communities around in general, then we use the arbitrators, which one of them is me, to either deal with the situation if there are any arises, which hasn't been for a completely long time, and to magistrate anything going on within the community itself. Sensitivity to the light is a very, very big part of it, too. I don't like people looking at my eyes. Now, how do you deal with that sensitivity? I mean, do you, is it that thing? I mean, do you, you're, you stay in during the day? No, that's why I work graveyard shift. Yeah. What do you, and what do you do? I am actually a concierge at the Hotel St. Marie on Toulouse Street. Okay. So that works out nice. Mm-hmm. If you're a vampire, you've always known its instinct. It is even, be, uh, even as a child? Even as a child. Anybody who wants to uh, run around with a cape and cloak and act like they're a vampire, they probably already have that instinct. If they've ever, you know, broken a wound and their mother looked at their blood and they were like, ooh, what's this, and lick it, doesn't mean that they're, you know, a vampire. But if they like the taste of their own blood, you know, the stereotype, but hey. When you so I mean, what at what kind of age did you actually say, okay, I'm this is who I am and I'm gonna go with it? No age, it's just general populace. There's no demand for it. I've been, you know, I'm not goth. Been wearing black since before the term goth was even elected to be a, a subculture popularity. Society always uses excuses for stuff they don't understand. Porphyric hemophilia is, in very rare cases, scientifically amended, but to me is still a psychological excuse to come up with little tiny stereotypes for something that they completely don't understand or don't wish to understand. So then help me understand what, help me understand what it means. If you had to explain what a vampire is and why to somebody who knows nothing, I don't, that would be me right now, because I'm confused now from some of the other things I've heard. How would you explain how you come to be? Actually, it's an undergoing discussion with the wife as well, or girlfriend in my matter. How you come to be is, you know, it's generally people will give the excuse about being pranic or about the energy, but it mostly has to do with the energy. It doesn't mean it's the energy from uh, from the skin or from the bone or anything to do with blood or consuming of blood because we all know that's a stereotype for the old Bram Stoker routine. I, you know, I am a vampire because I am, not because people think I am. I am vampire because I drain an individual's persona, their energy, personality, what have you, what you want to call it, Give me a name, give me a stereotype. I am vampire because I do. Um, and I'm like, I can't say who I am. Um, exactly. So what kind of eater are you? That I will not uh, discuss because it's kind of like talking about sex. Just don't talk about it. You mean people that are good at it? Don't have to <laughs> Is that how it works? Well... Okay. We have one we have one thing within our community. The people who are versus the people who role play the facts, the people who are lifestylers, there is a thing called instinct. If you know who you are, 
It's instinct that you know you are. If you think you are, don't play the game, go back home. It's not a game. This is life. It's flesh and bone. I wouldn't say there are uh, immortal vampires anywhere, but I can say we hew much faster, we age a little slower, but that's just us, that's life. If people don't understand the way of the vampire, more than likely they probably never will. And those people who lifestyle a thing, you know, you can lifestyle all you want, but if you know you are or you are, it's pure instinct and it catches on right quick. Can we go back a second? You said you don't know anyone that's immortal, but you would say, and can you safely say that you think that these guys, the vampires, can even heal faster, age it better, all that? Well, some of us on different, you know, different levels obviously do. There's no one human being in the world that doesn't heal slower than anybody else. Sometimes if you gain more vitamins or if you eat a nutritious meal every day, you're going to heal faster than the next man who hasn't eaten for a week. Basic thing that I'm trying to say here is that we don't really need very much, you know, uh, not very many quantities of food. It doesn't really, you know, it helps in the process, but it's our own bodies who reflect the damage to the body itself in a quicker way. Now, um, I heard you mention, uh, are you married or you have a girlfriend? Uh, let's just say it's going to be fiancé for quite a while because I don't believe in paperwork. Okay, fair enough. That's, uh, I think that's common to all. Mm -hmm. um, and is she a vampire as well? Let's just say we have an understanding. Not at the moment. So you don't want to talk about it? No. Okay. Can we talk about past relationships? Uh, it's a little personal. Okay. And I don't think it has anything to do with vampirism at the moment. Well, here's the thing. I mean, uh, and we don't have to talk about it, but part of what we're trying to do here in a respectful way mm -hmm. is change people's perspectives of what this is. The very things that you're talking about and some of the other people talk about about people thinking, you know, like it is in the movies. And part of what resonates with people that in relationships with other human beings, girlfriends, boyfriends, husbands, wives, all that. I see. We're just looking to see, looking for the, it's not like it's going to, we want to show the normalcy as well, you know, that's what we're looking for. So if you're still uncomfortable, uh, that's, that's why we can talk about that. Well, the way, you, uh, the way you just worded it, it's a little better understanding of it, I see where you're coming from. Part of my family does know the other half doesn't because we just don't communicate. My family is a very open-minded family. There are certain things within the family shouldn't be talked about, but if we feel comfortable talking about them, you know, the brother, the sister, mother, the father, you know, it's my life. They deal with it because they have to. If they want to deal with it, they come to me about it, say, hey, we got some problems, but it's never about any individual identity itself. Yeah. they shrugged it off like it was an old bad habit. And there's no real special thing about being a vampire. I mean, people would make it out to this really big, you know, stereotype of, ooh, ooh, he drinks blood, or ooh, ooh, he uh, wears weird clothing on an everyday basis. Me, personally, I don't consider it weird clothing. I consider it natural, you know, natural garb, you know. I wear a suit and tie at work. Now if I were to wear that suit and tie uh, to a comfortable atmosphere of people wearing t-shirts, they'd find it rude or they'd find it weird. Me, I wear a trench coat. Doesn't mean I'm, you know, part of any special society. I wear knee-high boots. That's only because it makes me feel comfortable, not that I'm a part of any special society. 
Right. It's not the dress that makes the person, it's the person that makes the person. Right. So, um, in, let's talk in general, and that way we don't have to actually uh, talk about uh, being an elder when you can probably just use any general term mm -hmm. uh, for community. Um, is, uh, do vampires usually just end up with vampires, or do they end up with what are called the mundanes, or is there, is there intermingling between the two groups, or is it the vampires all have their one community and they don't? Yeah. See, that's one big misconception. Everybody gets along with everybody. It's not a role-playing game. This is actually life. People dealing with people on a daily basis. Sometimes you know when a person is vampire because you can feel it. Like I said, instinct. If a person isn't a vampire, it doesn't matter. They're still a living, breathing, flesh person. Sometimes people believe in karma. If you're wicked to one person, sometimes people, when they say that they died, they feel the presence of the, you know, their whole life catching up with them, the feelings from everybody else around them that they did wrong. Now, involving vampires in that case, sometimes you can actually control the outcome of what happens because you are basically aware of your whole situation when you're alive versus the chance that you actually have when you're passing through that barrier between the flashbacks and actually dealing with them, but when you are have that, when you have that awareness, you can actually deal with it and not have it protrude in any outcome, causing you less stress. Vampire community. Most of us are aware, you know. The who are that we are are actually aware, very very aware, and it doesn't matter who we hang out with. Depends on all the choices that we make during this life, which carry on to the next, which involves. Uh, reincarnation, which is a very, very big aspect of, you know, some of our philosophy. Okay, now reincarnation is pretty much uh, the kind of thing that probably is, you know, accepted in amongst the non-vampiric community. Exactly. So it's, uh, would you say that reincarnation is really what it's all about, not this idea of immortality? Immortality is a human factor. People fear death. It's natural. Now, if you take away that fear of death, what do you have? Do you have an etheric revelation where you're going to be an ascended master in the forms of alchemy, like Saint Germain, or Serapis Bay, or Mother Mary? Different aspects, and then would go into religious politics and going into theology altogether. Not that I believe in it. Never said I believed in it. I just brought it up. <laughs> but um, to me, it doesn't matter if I live to see the end. It doesn't matter if I'm reincarnated into another life. The point of this life is to live it to the fullest, no matter who or what you are or claim to be. Um, so, uh, this question, are you living it to the fullest? So far as I can say, yes, I am. I wouldn't say all around, but it's getting there. Okay. And is that part of uh, the growth process, that it gets better as you become wiser? Is this a vampire question? I think it's a general question for any human being, I think. Um, I can't judge anybody else's life, so the question is irrelevant to me. Well, here's, here's the other question. If you, uh, as a vampire, I imagine, especially as an elder, they're not just living the life and being, there's probably quite a lot of situations you find yourself in where you have to, like you said, arbitrate, and therefore it involves um, perhaps research and study and even if it's just in an informal level. So like anybody that's in a position where they can influence others, they get better and smarter the more they do it. Best judgment, common sense, and life's experience, best way to put it. Now, um, before we continue, the word elder. We don't use elder in New Orleans. I was using that as an example. Okay. When a person claims that they're an elder, they're not. 
That's number one. If you know that you have respect in the community, that's fine. But you don't go touting it out at random to different people. That's a disgrace. You don't do that, it's simply a bad form. It just doesn't happen. The word elder was an example to use because people are used to that word or the term leader or the term general or any military fashion or form. But in the city of New Orleans, people who call themselves elders are not. Uh, to each their own on that one. If um, yeah, Zar's opinions are Zar's own, he's respected. And that's all I'm saying. But you're really thinking with them. Are you friends officially, or do you? Work We're associates. With the We're associates. That's yeah. That's as far as I'm going. Okay. And uh, what's what's the relationship between the the different houses? Are they are they does everybody work together for the greater good of each other, or? Now, see, this is, this is a very, very good question because as a historian for the vampire community of New Orleans, I can actually answer this question. You see, uh, it's been a 10-year span. Most of the houses got started way back in the 90s, especially with what was the, the White Wolf Syndrome, the Vampires and Masquerade Syndrome, the whole and Rice bit. Every single movie that comes out, there's always some sort of stereotypical vampire community that comes and goes with New Orleans nightlife or daylife, doesn't matter. What we had been dealing with were people coming and going, masquerading as this, masquerading as that. We even had people who come in uh, in the early 2000s who claimed to be Prince of the City, obviously a white wolf term. We've never had a Prince of the City. It's always been the houses, it's been a council, it's always been a round table. Everybody's equal no matter what. People who claim to be leaders or high dignitaries above everybody else, then they're sadly mistaken. There never has been one person for any job or voluntary work that we actually know of. The different houses work together in union. Sometimes we conflict, that's only natural. Conflict is apparent, there's always you know, there always has to be order out of chaos, but you can't have any order unless you have the chaos first. So, yes, we are very, um, we're very professional in all that we do. And, and so it is, whether formally or informally, everyone's working for the greater good. And not just of your community, but the whole community, right? I mean, I understand that there's a, a great kind of philanthropic bent to the certain houses. Is that true? That's true, yes. And if you, if you're not a part of the community, then what are you doing in the community in the first place? If there is no reaction from you to the community as an active member of the community, what are you doing in the community? So would it be safe to say that uh, many members strive to be more active in the community, whether it's giving back through philanthropic charity work or just being Well, not to throw any names out, but there are certain individuals within our community at the moment who are doing a damn good job of it. They're giving back and helping out. They, let's just say that um, those certain individuals, myself included, have been doing specific things throughout the community for the past couple of years that they deserve extremely more than a pat on the back, but unfortunately, that's mostly all they get in return, but they know they're greatly appreciated no matter what for their efforts. Were you here during Katrina? I was. That uh, must have been horrible. Did you have to leave the city? I did, but only for a short time. Uh, there is one person who I will name that actually did stay in the city, and that was Zar. Like I said, Zar is very respected. That's all I'm going to say about that. With him, it's to each their own. He uh, he's, has had a lot of contributions to the city and within the community and throughout the entire city, not just within the vampire community itself. Now let me ask you this. Um, obviously the community service aspect of it is 
great. What about was there a resistance? I mean, you know, you were a pretty visible community, certainly, given the way certain of the communities dressed. Is there, am I getting at it, has there been any sort of community backlash, religious backlash? The only backlash religiously, in the, if you mention that fact, is only if they bring it to us. There hasn't been religious backlash since the year 2000, and we have no idea what caused that. There had been prior to that. Yeah, I mean, you have regular conflict. Um, a little while ago, like not a couple of years back, but a little longer than that, I can't remember when, but there were some religious fanatics who were rumored to be running around with stakes and red crosses on their shirts or what have you that were doing malevolent acts towards the community, a couple of community members, but um, I won't discuss the outcome of that. So there, there has been that kind of prejudice? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say prejudice. I was just say ignorant people who didn't know what the hell they were doing. We watch them. If they get too close, so be it. It's not like they will ever be a part of it. If they want to have some fun playing it, they can. We know and we're very, very aware of it. Is it disrespectful, though, to you guys who are totally in it? Actually, we find it kind of humorous. Oh, you do? Yeah. That's, that's, that's an, another question. Think about, like, all those movies that are, have, you know, whatever they happen to be, we know them all. I mean, do you, do you guys, are you angered by those sad portrayals? <laughs> uh, portrayal is only eye of the beholder. It, if you're offended, that's your own choice. Um, most of us have the common sense not to be offended, and we actually, you know, take great care in who we are. And if somebody wants to portray us, I think that's kind of commendable. If um, they want to portray something that um, that they either want to be or can never become, it's very commendable. And actually, I thank them for trying or um, at least uh, you know thanks for the compliment so let's 